guys welcome to part three where i explain the final steps to finishing my dress and um how intricate it was to sew on the top layer of, of my fabric because it was beaded i forgot to say this a pattern a pattern is basically like a coloring book of a, a it looks like a coloring book in a weird way but you just cut it out and then it allows you to cut out the pieces that's the best way I can explain it and then you assemble it um most of the time a pattern does not look like the garment you're sewing but this time it kind of did Oh, okay so i had to make this a whole separate video because it took me like i think a whole day or two mind you when i was sewing this i was putting in overtime in sewing class if you want to say that but um yeah when i was sewing this i think it took me like a whole day to stitch the beaded fabric and i don't even remember oh no i finished it i finished it that day because i tried it on and you guys will see that footage okay so the beaded fabric this right here has something called netting which is like this and then the beads are attached to it um the netting it held the beads but like if you cut a, a certain piece of the netting a bead is gonna fall off which was good and bad in some cases. But you'll see that I had to strategically sew different parts of the fabric. So I believe the video starts where I'm cutting out the bodice. Bodice, not bodice. Bodice of the dress. And as you you'll be able to see that like it looks like a regular piece and that's because I cut it out like this and then I I hammered it around the edges so when I went to sew when I went to sew the beads were not in the way but the sequins were still there you can stitch through the sequins the big stuff but you cannot stitch through the little balls and beads there's two different types of beads on here if you look really closely but um yeah but uh, both of them had to be smushed um if i didn't smush them one my seams would not be able to be straight and if i tried to just sew through them machine broken and not or needle so that's why i had to hammer it um, originally I was doing, I believe we called it, I think, thread tracing. And you'll, I think you can see that in the first piece I cut. It was like bright pink threads right here because we hand stitched like a really easy, a really easy stitch to basically give us a guide on how much we should hammer. And I think we did that because that was such an important piece. But some pieces you'll see me cutting it and I'm laying the pattern piece like say this is the pattern piece and this is my fabric. I'm laying it a little wait hold up. Let me do it this way. This is not how you're supposed to do it. But I'm laying it a little over it so that I can just cut here and that okay, seam allowance is when how much you have to go into the fabric to stitch it to allow it to be tight and taut. And it's just basically how far into the fabric you're going you're putting the needle from the edge Ooh. um so let's just say i cut it do 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 oh gosh yeah you see it let's say i cut it 
this is where I want my needle to go in my fabric. That just made it easier for me to sew. But I couldn't do that on every single piece because of the shape and size. Or we just ran out of edges and corners. Um, so you'll see that. I did that on... Did I do that on there? Yes, I did it on the top of the cigarette piece. And that's where you'll see my teacher explaining to me how she would um want to put more beads in because we had a lot of extra netting instead of beaded because of the way we had to sew that piece we kind of had to overcompensate So I was hammering for hours. I think on my like bottom skirt pieces, I guess you can call it. I think each piece took me like 20 minutes to hammer. Because I basically, imagine it was like a pizza, a rectangle pizza. I basically had to hammer the pizza crust in. And it was annoying. It was painful because I was on my hands and knees. Oopsie, a bee just fell. Um, and beads were getting stuck everywhere. And it felt so it was so sad at the same time because um I we paid so much for this fabric and then you gotta hammer it to sew it properly. So yeah, I some so we had to hammer it. You have the, the two, all three separate pieces oh, yeah, assembled. Yeah, are made. Yeah. Every, all three layers are made. Yeah. But... And now it's time to put it all together. Yeah, put it all together. Did you tell it's the camera scary. already? No, all oh. three layers are made, and now we got to put it all together. It's a bit scary. These beads are beating me up.
even though I beat them up. Fitting in the next video. <laughs> and then you'll see me and my son's teacher stitching. No, yeah, hand stitching all the layers together. So I honestly, honestly, honestly do not remember, do not remember stitching the lining to the bottom of my dress. Um, but when you see me and my teacher hand stitching it, nothing was attached. And actually, I believe my teacher did that last step where, um, I don't, I don't, I think the last day I stitched uh, mostly everything. Um, I, I don't remember. I just remember things took longer than I thought on that last day and I was exhausted and I didn't, it was a lot. I finished my dress like four days before prom, five days. No, 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 no. A week before prom, something, something not good. But I did it, unless, with the help of my teacher, like I don't ever play with my teacher because she don't play with you. Um, yeah. S yeah. So, yeah. You'll see us hand stitching. She's explained to me how she wants to do it. I probably will keep that all in. Because I think it's such a good moment. It shows how much patience she has with me. But also how happy teaching sewing to students like me makes her. Um, Most of the footage you'll see of me and her studio. No one else is there because it's just me and her. And a lot of times I didn't film because it was awkward. I'm not going to lie. It was awkward because I'm sorry I got something to do um it was awkward because I've been sewing I have been sewing for well I haven't sewn in almost a year now because my prom dress was my last project but I want to get back into it but I literally don't even know how I'm gonna do it maybe over the summer but I have to see um I'm trying to remember how long I've been sewing. I think I was sewing for eight. Mm -hmm. No, nah, I was not sewing for no nine years. I was sewing for seven years. Yep, the number in my head was right. I have been sewing for seven years. So I knew how to sew. Me and me and my sewing teacher, Miss Taylor, we knew how to sew with each other. She knew what she had to do to help me or what I could just click and do on my own. So when I was explaining stuff to people, they would ask me, oh my God, why? they would ask questions. They'd be like, oh, you're making a dress. How long you been sewing? Where are you going to school? No, let me cut out this fabric that cost a million dollars, please. But it was just a lot. It was just, she has other students. I didn't, it, it was awkward. I'm, I'm too shy to be record. I barely wanted to record when she was in there, but my mom insisted. She was like, record, record, record. So that a lot of the footage like that would wasn't able to be seen unless I was just with her but yeah what you see dang got off topic but what you see me and my sewing teacher doing when it's on the dress form is um sewing the top of my dress all the layers together but it's not neat we're just sewing it so we can zip it up and just get it there, get it on there and then make it pretty later because with once the the dress is heavy, once it got to like a certain weight, you need to like tack it down many different ways. And sometimes pins are good, but sometimes the fabric is too heavy and flowy for pins so the pins just pop right out. Um, yeah, I hope everybody knows what pins are because I don't know how to explain that. It's just like little needles that you put through your fabric to keep it together. Some people use clips, some people use weights. You kind of have to use different things for different times. Get
So I'm gonna need to sew the center back seam to make it match. some bees there. Now my first, my first idea, because we have lots of, we have lots of this. Okay. If you cut the netting off, you can reapply the pieces. Wait, let me do this. Mm -hmm. You have to handle that? Yeah. Okay. That'd be really, really short stitches, just putting the, mm -hmm. putting that back on. Yeah, I could do it you, can <laughs> Right. Um, the other option would be to go in and individually hand bead that back in. Yeah. The only thing I was thinking is we don't, we're not keeping the sequence, so it might not be, because it would look different. Yeah, but you have lots of scraps, we can cut the yeah, sequence yeah. off and then hand stitch them on. But I think since this is already on the netting, we can probably just make small stitches and stitch patches of those back on there. Mm -hmm. That's my theory. <laughs> okay, get a hand needle. And uh, we're not gonna machine stitch this together. So hand base it around the front neckline, the back neckline. You're doing a pink? Yeah, I'm doing a pink. You can do it in color. But we definitely want a contrast color because we're gonna pull these out. And hand base down the zipper. Where we're going to place the zipper. Okay, we're going to do some hand work and we'll be back. Mm -hmm. We are finally having a fitted. Look at that glimmer. Can you see that? <laughs> it's amazing. Okay. I feel like a proud mama right Hold on, two dress. Hold on, let me get the safety pin.
check the height for the slit. Okay, but I think the bodice fits wonderful. Yep, we need the beading. Working on, we're gonna get the zipper in, and that'll be all closed up. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yep, let me grab the sleeve. <laughs> so, when you, when you walk, you have to make strides when you first start. All right, so when you turn to go that way, I want you to take your dress and literally push it out the way. All right, so grab your dress, push it out the way, and kick your leg out, and start walking. That was the wrong leg, but okay. <laughs> Come on back. So now you're going to turn. Okay, see how you just turn with that leg? If you're turning with this leg, this is the one that you push back and kick your foot. So you don't step on your dress. Okay, okay, okay. And then the other foot, you do the right. Oh, got it. Back over here in front of the camera, I'm just going to slip one arm on you. Okay, so this is how it looks with the sleeve. Next video will be the final dress. Yeah, I made my prom dress. I don't really like to say that I made it myself because I would not be able to do it on my teacher. Like, I would have an idea, but she knew, like, she had the inside scoop of what to tell me. Like, I would have never known it was called ruching. I would have never known that I had to do the ruching the way I did. Had to do it in two parts, and I had to... Like, she really, she really did her thing on a ruching. Like, I really didn't know what to do. She folded it and all, and she she had to draw the ruching pattern for me. And the ruching pattern, I don't have none of the patterns. But the ruching pattern looked like a freaking Lego piece. And, like, you wouldn't know that's what it takes to make something look so elegant. So, I really appreciate her. She's, like, literally kind of raised me in a weird way because I've known her since... I was in elementary school. Um, she's watched me grow up and along, along with other students. 
yeah, I'm really grateful. But I mean, I'm really grateful for her. And hopefully some of the clips, you can see the love through the screen. Sewing helped me clear my mind a lot of time. Like I didn't, one, I started in fourth grade. I knew fractions before I knew I knew fractions because that's how you measure stuff in sewing. And that's how you measure stuff in life. But like, it's just weird. It prepared you for little things like preciseness and all this other stuff. But I think it helped me just wind down. Yeah, I'm good for my mom for signing me up because it kind of, I think that's part of the reason I'm so independent. Um, because I just knew how to do different things that my family didn't know how to do. So I just kept getting those skills because I was like, I don't know. That's the end of part three where I basically explain the terror of my beaded fabric and the final steps. I was just sewing all the layers together. And some of them some of the time it had to be hand stitched, some of the time it had to be No, actually it did have to be hand stitched. And the bottom layer of my dress isn't even stitched together with the beaded. The beaded one is its own layer because we just found that was easier to do. The beaded fabric looks like it looks like this. Hold on, let's just say. Let's just say this is the bottom of my dress. This is what the beaded fabric looked like because it's just folded over and sewn, hand stitched. And I think I we just sewed it together at like a few different places so it would drag easily behind me. Yeah, I hope, I hope, I'm not going to say other people should make their prom dress, but I hope this helps people know, like, don't get ripped off. Like, either when you're charging, because honestly, I don't know how much I would have charged for this dress. Because that hammering, that hammering, the hammering would have cost them, I don't know, a good penny. So I was tired of it and I was I wasn't doing it for free but you know yeah this is part three and yeah I hope that helps people learn how much it takes to sew something like that um I don't think every prom just takes that much it's different styles take a different amount of effort um but yeah yeah I keep saying that I don't know how to end it but yeah that's part three I'm really proud to see, like, literally, I, t well, I don't know if I told her this verbally, but she's part of the reason, like, in a weird way, I want to do what I, I want to do in my life, because I've watched her be a regular person, like, be a mother and be, uh, um, a businesswoman, and just be a human while just feeding her passion and working a nine-to-five, some, and, like, she went, from being you know having her business i watch her business grow literally me and a few other students have been there that long and yeah like i want to be like her like have my nine to five possibly not even not even use it anymore once i get to a certain point and still feed my passion